Okay, we are back for another episode of the show. The 15th episode. The 15th episode <laughs> of the show. Episode number 15. Yep. Episode number 15, and we have Gunny Matheson, girl of the show, Joe Schmidt, and our distinguished there guest, yeah. Martin Larcom. And this is our second take because Chelsea screwed up the first take. <laughs> we had so some, two we had minutes in, stuff. we had some really great it's stuff. Golden. It was riveting. <laughs> I called Martin extinguished, <laughs> and our extinguished, no, no. <laughs> not extinguished, <laughs> established. <laughs> what, what do you say for that? Uh, so what's the like word I'm thinking of? Distinguished. 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 <laughs> not extinguished. Not, not extinguished. <laughs> no, yeah, that would have been horrible. That, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. we're wishing you the best. No, yeah. we don't yeah, want to dis- We're not wanting to put any fires out. Yeah. No, that'd be bad. We when laughed. I missed, and we laughed a lot. Yeah, it was for, super funny. Yeah. And I'm sure so she's going to put a tape of outtakes so together. So just picture that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah just, so just picture that. Just picture <laughs> all of us laughing yeah. a lot. And it was really, really funny. It, it was, was unbelievable. And <laughs> Chelsea screwed it up. It was hilarious. <laughs> so, at any rate. No matter what kind um, of <clears throat> But I do want to reiterate uh, one of the first times that I ever met Martin was in Mousselard, France. And he uh, was the winner of that raining. It was a big rain, and I took a pretty nice horse over there. Tim, my uh, fa- Tim McQuay, when uh, father-in-law Tim McQuay went with me. Who I guess. It? It, well, I don't know. Wait, what? He, he starts stuttering. He's yeah. stuttering when he has to say yeah. stuff well, like that. Yeah. Like it's not. It's, yeah. it's, it's not. It's, it's, he's, <laughs> Why do I say I don't have to say father? Well, everybody right. knows right. that, yeah. well, but I don't. Have, I say, just say Tim McQuay because yeah. he's like Tim McQuay. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I didn't even know where it was going there. Yeah. But well, anyway, either way, with me. you got your butt kicked at Moose Lark. Yeah, by Martin. Yeah. yeah. And and the and the second time I met Martin, we went to uh, Mallorca in Spain. And kick my butt again. Kick your butt again, I bet. Yep. And they and they always played that in Europe they always play we that the song. champion song. We uh I champions, you saying that. Champ- and they just go over <laughs> champion cha- champion like they say champion forty times in a <laughs> row when he's loping around and you're just sitting there like you're just a loser and they just rub it in that he's the champion. And now when you call and, Martin that's his ringtone, I guess. No, I really, I mean, I hated Martin. At that <laughs> moment, I was like, I don't know this guy, but he's a champion. And they just keep rubbing it in, and I don't like it. And then we got to know each other. And uh, he's a very likable guy. Yeah. Even well, being an Aussie, yeah, yeah, some, with that, most of the Aussies yeah. are not, you know, I mean, they're not so likable. <laughs> no, I, 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 like, I like them all. I like them all because they got yeah, a cool sound. It's like, all right, and hey, mate, yeah. how you going? Noise. And, yeah, no, and yeah. then you like. But no, I, but, <laughs> but but it's awesome to have Martin here because he's been successful in Europe. He's been at the top of the top. He's been at the top in America now, and I mean he came from Australia. I don't know. I don't know how you did there, but no, he was pretty. I bet you did better. Team. I bet you did better in in Europe and and in America than you did in Australia. And, Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And before I'm the bad guy here talking bad about Aussies, that's a compliment to an Aussie. If you don't like them? If you say, that guy's an ass, they're proud of that. I mean, of the Aussies that I know, like, Guy Woods is a very good friend of mine. Yeah, he's like, he works, yeah, yeah, I no. don't think that's really You're the exception to the rule. Yeah, but Guy Woods is a very good yeah. friend of mine, and he tries to be a bigger ass every day. And, and, I, and I love the guy. And uh, he, would, uh, he would always, Guy would always work his... Assery. <laughs> but what Tom Assery. is saying is you're a nice guy. All right? Good. Yeah. Good. That's Good. what I'm you. saying. You're not a, yeah, I'm not going to say you're not a typical Aussie, but you know. Oh, dude, now we're staring. I said it again. Dude. Listen, we can't be stereotyping <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, be dude, we got to be politically correct. There's no stereotyping on this show. I love all Aussies. Yes. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah, they're yeah. on the show. Most of them, anyway. Right Some on. of them. Right. Well, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> on that note, so, how'd you get, uh, uh, Martin, how'd you get started in the horse business? Uh, we grew up with horses, like Dad always had an interest in horses. Um, 
And you, you like, lived out of town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's what we talked about earlier. Out of Adelaide. Yeah. We yeah. lived, yeah, well, like originally. In suburbia. And when you're oh. out of town in Australia, you are out of town. To a certain extent. Oh. But then the, but then we moved to town when I was little. Gotcha. Okay. So anyway, we um, we always, like, he always had horses on the farm. He was a farmer. Um, but then... Like he was a like a long haul truck driver, and so we moved to town, and he was doing that. But then he gradually kind of got back into the horses when I was probably around seven or eight year old, I guess. Um, and I guess his interest was more towards rodeo, you know, that type of thing. So any horses that we had, we roped on them or whatever. They weren't necessarily good rope horses, but that's what you did. Um, <clears throat> and then that kind of coincided with the whole start of the quarter horse business in Australia. You know, there were a few clubs springing up here and there, and it just kind of led on from there to where we would, as kids, um, you know, rodeo one weekend, a quarter horse show the next weekend, or a, just a Western performance show or whatever, and it kind of just led on from there. So. That's how we got started. Did yeah. you did you experience a reining horse in Australia then? And what age were you at when you experienced riding a reining horse? Well, there were reining classes at those shows. But it wasn't reining? No, it was the horse that you did everything else on. Yeah. It was your yeah. pleasure horse, your barrel racing horse, your rope horse, your bulldog and horse. It was whatever, you know. It wasn't, I guess it was probably around... No, oh, gee, mid '80s or something like that. That you know, it kind of caught my interest a little bit more. Cool. Um, there were videos coming out of the states here. You know, I remember Craig Johnson put one out um, that you know we would all sit and watch that and just what those horses could do with a little more finesse and style and that sort of thing. Um, and that kind of got a few of us pretty interested in that. So. It's amazing that a video like that would get a whole group of people started on a trend towards raining because I'm sure in the grand scheme of things, the the video that Craig Johnson made probably wasn't a big deal globally. You know, it might have been a big deal in the horse business, but... But it might have been then. I mean, yeah, Craig yeah, was yeah. on the top of his game then. I mean, he was, yeah. he was in the same stratosphere as Bob Loomis and Tim McQuay and Bill Horn and... I mean, Craig was, Craig won the first $150,000. No, I, I agree that sure. with that, but it wasn't the Chicago Bulls and the Detroit Pistons big. It wasn't like no, no, global, no, for sure. you know. And no, but for someone that had like a little bit of a an interest in that type of thing, it was kind of like, oh, wow, this is what, you know, this is what can be done. Um, <laughs> and, and I guess like a lot of Australians that were in that, that kind of world, they went more to the cutting route sort of thing, cutting route, as you say. Um, but w the area that we were in wasn't a big cattle area, so it was kind of hard to get cattle on that. It was just easier to have rainers, and so that's kind of how we went that way. But at that time also, too, in the late 80s, you know, mid-80s to late 80s, there were, um, we started like a, a raining association. Um, and we, the judges that come out and judge our futurity show, um, we'd have them do clinics, and and some just came out and do clinics anyway. I know Tim came out at one point, probably around '89 or so. Um, you know, Loomis came out. A few of those guys came out and did clinics, Dick Peeper. So we gradually kind of got an exposure to it that way, and that, and more and more, I kind of got into that sort of thing. I was shoeing horses then, um, but, you know, I kind of figured I'd rather be on top of right. them rather than underneath them sort of thing, so for better or worse, that's just kind of what happened. Well, you're built a little better to ride them. Yeah, yeah, you that's right, it's a long way to bend down. <laughs> you have to shoe yeah. a tall horse. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real tall. I used to shoe a lot of race horses, so. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so what made you decide to go to Europe instead of the U.S.? There's a lot of demand for in both places. Um, I Well, it just came out of the blue. I don't know if you know a guy called Rob Lawson, an Australian that... Um, I heard the name. Yeah, he he was kind of here a little bit. I think he worked for Carl Rose at one point, or for um, Jeff Petzger at Carl Rose was there at one point, and he went to Italy and worked for uh, Ferrarini's Lucia. Okay. 
Um, so did I. Actually. Yeah, okay. And so he heard of a job going there and just called me out of the blue. Um, and as you can imagine, like trying to be a horse trainer in Australia is not what that, thing. yeah, the easiest thing and the most lucrative thing. I think at that time I was working in a fruit orchard through the day, driving tractors and that type of thing, planting trees and so on and so forth, and then just riding at night. Right. So I get a call to go to Europe and and to Italy, to Mario Abetta's place, um, and it was really just a no-brainer. So, because that's at that point in time, that was your passion was to be riding horses more. Yeah, and you know I was riding reiners there, but it's you know it's not, and I think it's gotten better since. But back then, it was still not like a, a very viable sort of a industry to be in. Yeah. So. You know, going to Europe was a game changer. It was it was huge, and the and the bloke that I went and worked for, Mario, was great. Mario and Barbara, is that right? Mario, you hearing that? You're a bloke. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and need so good, that need that Google kind that. of changed everything. You know, I the the learning curve was kind of like that. Yeah. You know, because I think in Australia, um, I could get them broke to get through a pattern and and stuff, but you didn't really have to be real high intensity on the maneuvers so much um so you know even back then in italy like there were like like yourself there were a lot of american guys went over there and it was kind of a yeah but by the time you went over there yeah all the good american guys went home yeah, right. yeah. so it's yeah. pretty yeah. easy yeah, yeah that's right yeah, yeah there you go that's right. those two times that yeah. you went yeah so yeah, so yeah. What, what's what's back home, right? Right? I mean, let's not bring that up no. yeah, yeah let's, let's that back this up because when, before the cameras were on, he said he went to Europe in 97. Yes. Okay. Just to give us a time frame. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And I came home from Europe in 93, I think, and Dwayne maybe in, Dwayne and, and Dean maybe in 94 or 5, is that right? Well, they were gone when you got there, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, Dwayne was gone maybe a year or so. Right. Yeah. So you were at the Euro the European rainy market was in shambles after the mess they left it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but and I know that you learned the language. Uh, if yes. you speak it, you speak it, you know, really well and I know all of like Dwayne and Dean and my, myself, we, my brother Jimmy, we all learned that language. Dale Harvey of course was probably the pioneer over there he was the first guy he worked for our chases and uh probably was as big of influence on that reigning market as any of the americans yeah and uh so he started it off and you know we all learned the the, the language and i think that's probably a big part of being able to survive and to thrive over there is to take in the whole thing and to learn the language. I know for me, I don't know how long it took you, but the first year, I wasn't really into learning the language. But the second year, I started to want to pick it up and because it just made life so much easier, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. How long, how long was it before you started to pick it up? Oh, gee. Well, see, I lived there for seven years, I think, all yeah. up. But it, yeah, it took a good two years. <laughs> you know, you pick up little things straight off the bat sort right. of thing. But it probably took a good two years before you could be kind of halfway conversational. And even now it's still probably not correct. Yeah. You know, but you can certainly yeah. I can you know, it got to the point where you could talk to any any other person that you don't know on the phone or anything like that and, and get by any sort of, you know, business you had to do. Yeah. Um, you gotta ask, you know, Dove La Bagno right yes. away. Where's the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's the bathroom? First thing at the horse show, you know, like, where's the bathroom? So, I, yeah, I, I remember the first time I asked that, they sent, I was in Italy, and they sent me into, they said, it's over there. I walk in there, <clears throat> and it's all these, it's this big thing, and you go in, and it's just these holes in the ground. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, they tricked me, because this bathroom's not done, right? Because it's just a <laughs> hole in the ground. It's built. And That's you got it. I'm telling you. It's a shocker. Well, it's a shocker, and there's a little bit of technique. I mean, you don't just oh, yeah. use that thing the first time with. Was with there like a rope hanging from the wall that no, you could lean back on? No, no. Man, you got it. And it doesn't tell you, like, 
Because there's a no, there's no diagram. Yeah, there's there's a, a, do you face little, it or you turn around? There's a little way. bit of serration yeah. in the tile. That's maybe yeah, you look where grip. you put your feet. That's kind oh, of a big, really yeah, yeah. Where the tile is, you can tell where you're supposed to put your feet. <laughs> but when you got a dude, where did America go wrong? Because we never had those toilets. We never. We where did they go, go wrong? wrong? Yeah, so that's a horrible <laughs> toilet. <laughs> oh, what? No. It you sounds appealing. I'm sorry. It sounds no. great. I well, remember in Japan. When we no, were I sat down. And the the greatest toilet I ever used was in Japan. No, it, it, had, in our it had a freaking ass heater, and something that washed your butt when you no, were done. It, it was great. Oh yeah. Well, compared yeah. to this, uh, Italy was like a Model T. I mean, <laughs> that was the first. I mean. It, it was just a hole in the ground. Yeah. And you had to be real, like you had to line her up and yeah. you mean to shit. Make <laughs> sure. And make there sure. was like no, no rope to hang on no, to. Nothing. You back you on. Hang on to pull nothing. yourself back up. You, yeah, just, you, to, just, you just concentrate and make sure you don't, you know, drop anything in the back of your you pants. You just get or, down there in the catcher's position. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got <laughs> it. You got it. Huh. There was no, it was, so anyway. anyway. Yeah, we should move on. We can move on. We can move on. Sorry, Mark. We're glad we have you here to talk about <laughs> toilets. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's one wrong. of the first International toilets. Yeah, we're, and, then, and then, yeah, and then where's the food stand? So that's the next thing. But, yeah, so, yeah, you, and, but once you learn, the, to me, once you learn the language over there, it just opens up everything. Yeah. I mean, it just... <clears throat> Then you can go do whatever you want. You can go sightsee. You can go even if you get lost. You can find your way home. And I'm sure, like me, uh, in that time frame when you were over there, there was no internet. When I was there, I mean, there was no. You know, I, I know now when kids come from Europe, the first thing they do. I don't know if Skype is still the thing, but they get on the computer and talk to the to their parents back home in Europe and whatnot. We had none of that. I mean, no. you got off the plane and you were in a, you were in a different country with no contact yeah. with home. And I think in some senses that might've made it a little bit easier. Yeah. And uh, you know, I always, for the kids that come to work for me from Europe, that first day, if they got to come in the office to use the Wi-Fi to talk to their parents, I'm like, it's a worry. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how long this is going to last because yeah. they can't make it a day. Yeah. But you, did you have your, uh, uh, was Sam, did she go with you right off the bat? Right off the bat, no. I went there like in, like at that, for about two or three months at the end of 97 as a bit of a trial run. Because like the like Mario, the the bloke that I went and worked for, um, he was kind of, you know, to, what do they ride, kangaroos in Australia or what? He, like, all he knew was there was an Australian company. He had no idea who this bloke was or and you don't whether he came or as, No, not. Well, it was some, I'm sure some people are You're boss. Boss kangaroos. That's right. And so anyway, so I had a trial run and that was all good. And so then we went back in January or February of 98 and Sam came then. Oh, cool. So... Um, yeah, but, um, Sam's his wife. Oh, yeah, his sorry. Boyfriend. That could go. That name could go. Oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Not, not that there's anything wrong with <laughs> that's that. That's right. But just but, to clarify. Just yeah. to clarify. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess the internet came in after about two or three years that we were there. But like being the early adopter that I am, it took me probably another year or two to really figure <laughs> that out as well. So. But yeah, I know what you're saying. It's kind of like you, you're there. That's it. You have to deal with it. Yeah, fully so, immersed. Yeah. In how, how long? Area. How long did it take you from the time that you started your job in Italy till you were at your elite level there? Till you were at I don't know top top oh, of the game because you were at well. the top of the game. You were on the cover of the Rainer several times from Europe. Um, well, I started well. 98, I guess, technically, is when we started, like, right off, you know, going right through that year. Um, I won the fraternity in 99 in Italy. That didn't take long. No. Um, and, you know, it was kind of, sometimes, like all fraternities, things go your way a little yep. bit, you know, there's a little bit of luck here and there. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter where you win now, and especially even then. If you won the fraternity in Italy or Europe, the European fraternity, the Italian fraternity, you had to be legit. Maybe yeah. you didn't have to be as legit to be 10th, 
But to be the winner, you, you had, had to, to be, be good. good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had to be good. It changed, you know, it changed so much over the years to where maybe 10th place, if you look at the European fraternity and the, the American fraternity, 10th place and 10th place, yeah. there was a big difference. That's right. yeah. But first place and first place are good runs. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're legit. Mm -hmm. no, so it didn't take you long to be successful in Europe? No, I guess not. Huh. It was kind of, like I was saying before, I don't know if that was on the original version of the show or this, this catch up. For the redo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, saying, we're like, on episode 15 15A. A. <laughs> um, B. Yeah. You know, I could kind of, I could kind of get them broke to get through a pattern. You know, back in Australia, um, but I had to kind of just raise the intensity of the maneuvers. Was there one person in, in Italy that helped you, that the, you had the light bulb moment, said, no, you got to do this, 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 and set you on the right track fast? Was there one person? or the, Only just the, the other people that I was competing against. Gotcha. You know, like back then, like David Hanson, he was yep. the king. He was winning yep. everything. So basically, we kind of said, okay, well, he's, he's the guy that's winning. We need to be at the same intensity as him. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. So, you know, and, that, and I think, um, too, the horsepower helped, you know, and you had a guy that would go out and get you some good horses, and, you know, Mario was, Mario was a great guy. Was that the guy, did you work for somebody else over there, or were you with no, Mario just, the whole just time? just with Mario, yeah, I worked for him for six years, yeah. Yeah, no, Mario was a great guy, and still comes over to the fraternity and mm -hmm. stuff, and always smiling, always, oh, yeah. always happy, always... Always a great guy and a great ambassador for the sport. So you were lucky to hook up with yes. him because, as you and I both know, not every situation is that no, good over that's, there or anywhere. That's for sure. That's something where you know Sam and I are very aware of that we really lucked out. Like yeah. him and his wife Barbara, um, you know, we were very fortunate to just kind of stumble across that right. that family. And so your transition from Europe to the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, did you go back to Australia for a little while, or was it straight from Europe to the U.S.? No, um, we went back to Australia in 06, uh, yeah, the end of 06. Um, Why? Well, because we were always going to go back. Um, but to train horses, or to raise your family, or what? Yeah, a little bit of both. Well, not to, to train horses, yes, but not in terms of like a career move because it's not really yeah that, that's why i'm asking that's why i'm curious of the decision because you don't you don't really say i'm gonna pick my career up and go but back this to next move is gonna be right. the one honey yeah no um we were originally i told mario we were going to go back in in 2004 back to australia um i know i got another job offer oh five oh six and when I got that offer, like Sam really wanted to go home and build her house because, you know, for, you know, all that time, kind of busted ass, whatever, not having any money or whatever. And we kind of got to a position where we could go and do what, you know, set up a nice place. Well, she always wanted to do that. So we went, we were going to do that in 2004 and then we got this other job and we stayed there for another two years in Europe. And, and but at that time I said okay two years um, is it and then we're going back so I was kind of committed to that um, and so we did we went back home built a house and you know little barn and so on and so forth and rode a few horses and then the opportunity came up to come back over here for the people that I was working for for those couple of years wanted me to come back and set up their place here American deal. Yeah. yeah and so that's that's why we came here so and it was always something that was in the back of my mind because like you know i was i was okay in australia i was okay in europe but kind of this is a whole different level you know yeah. and i just always wanted to know if i could be somewhere in yeah. the mix over here so that oh you know it was kind of always there i'm sure a lot of europeans and a lot of people that don't know and there's a lot of people that have never made that move that are thinking about it what's the difference is it different is it better is it worse is it harder is it you know you've been successful in europe and in america you've been second in the derby you've won the southwest fraternity which is a huge fraternity for us here 
more than once. You've been top five in the fraternity that I know of. I don't know how many times. I mean, you've been at the top level here now. Uh, I don't know. What, to, to, what's so? Are you asking what's the difference between? What, yeah, those? I'm sure somebody would love. What's the difference between Europe training a horse there and training a horse in America, and how to be successful here and how you've been successful there? It's like it's been what. Uh, you know, 14 years since I was in Europe, so I don't really, don't really know now. Um, you but, left Europe at the top of the game. Yeah, but still, like I think maybe like you were kind of talking about earlier, Tom. There's kind of, and I don't know if it's still the same in Europe, but at the top, there's a few that are at the top, and then, and and you kind of know they're the ones that are going to be around there and, and then it, it gets thin quick yeah. whereas here it's like you go to the futurity and there's there's 50 yeah. to 100 there's 50 guys that can go market 20. Yeah. yeah yeah you know it's 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 so much it's so deeper and 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 it's so so hard yeah you know and then that's it's not like i'm telling anybody here any secret it's but, so but at the same point in time it might be hard in one aspect but you have horseshoers that live yes. less than a mile down the road you have 60 vets within a 30 mile radius of this place where we live i mean it, it might be hard competitive wise but training a horse in this area getting a horse shod getting a horse looked at is so much easier than probably anywhere else in the world oh it, 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 yeah no doubt there's no question whatsoever yeah the support system is is yes. huge yeah. it's here yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> big time yeah no that's that's for sure this is like you say within 30 40 minutes in this area is everything that that and you, need. That you yeah. need times 10 you know yeah. it's it's well i know when i lived uh when i lived in italy there was so you could find a good enough horse shower. You could find guys that were, were knew how to put on a shoe. You know, they came from diff different disciplines, but a good horse shoe is a good horse shoe. Mm -hmm. But the vets were a little bit trickier because it was hard to find anybody that knew anything specific to what we did. There wasn't as many of those and they were spread out a little bit more. And uh, you know, here we're so, I mean, this is unbelievably lucky to be here because you know, I know guys that come from Oregon and, and Minnesota and, and all over the country to come here to have vets look at their horses. Yeah, actually tonight, Arizona. tonight somebody's dropping four horses off my, at my place from Colorado to, to meet Dr. McCarroll in the morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're super lucky to have those guys all within 20 minutes of us. And, and, and there's a whole, you know, there's a bunch of, of vets that are all that quality. Yeah. They know what they're doing so yeah we're super fortunate and i think for me that was the biggest thing in europe is was that and and i think <clears throat> and i think it's gotten better after i left but when i was in europe i know it really helped me prepare a horse here because when i lived in europe you had to be ready for anything i mean the ground maybe got in the day before and it was terrible and you had no warm-up space and you know and i know it's way better now in europe i know they've got a lot all those kinks or most of those kinks ironed out but anywhere we go today to a raining in the u.s the ground is good yeah. anywhere everywhere it's great yeah. yeah i mean we're super super fortunate to to know when we're getting our horses ready at home we know when we go to the horse show that ground's going to be good at three in the morning at, at, three, <laughs> at three in the morning now i don't know how good it is at three in the oh, morning but i'll take your word for it it's good yeah it's real good what martin are you a so you're a prime timer nowadays yeah are you you still a middle of the night rider when do you prefer to ride when you're out of the i'm an early hours of the morning rider i just work back from the you know when they kick us out i kind of figure out how many hours i need how many horses and i i work back from there so you're not afraid to get up at three in the morning or oh hell no 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 that's no that's good that's yeah. You start. yeah when do you start at home in the in the heat and the stuff uh right now um 
Oh, uh, it'll be 4.30 or so when I get there. Is there lights in your indoor? Yeah, room? there is now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a big transition when you go to the horse show? No. So getting ready to go to the to the Tulsa Fraternity slash NRBC, the two week you know, we've never had anything like that before. Yeah, I mean, been, it's going to be... Mm. It's been a every, grind already. Everybody's, <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> yeah. no, everybody's kind of preparing for the marathon that it's going to be, right? Yeah. Um, what, how many horses are you taking there? Um, well, let's see. I think we'll have seven or so there. So, you know, by a lot of people's standards, not a lot. Um, I don't have any, like, classic derby horses. I'll just have like a couple of three-year-olds, I think, um, and then a few non-pro horses. And so, what you won't have? What will you have for the NRBC itself? N no, I won't have an. You open. don't have any. No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's strange. That's the mm. first time for a long time. It is. It? Yeah. Yeah. And, it is. Yeah. It's the first time since I've been here. Basically. Why do you? Why do you? Why? Why did that happen? Oh well, let's see. The three that I had last year at the Futurity. One is now a non-pro horse. Pretty nice horse. A good non-pro horse. Yeah, yeah. good non-pro horse. A contender to win the non-pro. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're watching, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one went to Europe for the European Futurity and we, we know how that all turned out. Yeah. Um, and then another one we sold to California, so. Um, we don't know how all that turned out. How'd that turn out? Well, they didn't have the show. No, there's some virus oh, going yeah. around. I have to get that out there. He yeah. doesn't. He doesn't believe in that. There's no just, virus. It's, it's, a, just, yeah, he it's a flu. It's a I touch every handrail and eat M and M's after I do it. I saw, him, I saw him licking a window the other day. I lick windows, okay? <laughs> yeah, but he does that. And you know what else I did? did I you tested him? negative, okay? I he did get a negative. test. Yeah, I know he got a test. Okay. Yeah, he sure did. So I noticed we're not distant. Yeah, we're, we're not distant. No, no. no. If you're, well, if you're in the house, you're safe. Okay. Yeah, there's, we, there's a force. It's, yeah. yeah. it's, it's a McCutcheon force. <laughs> yeah, it's a <laughs> COVID, it's it's a COVID air 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 We yeah. have a safe it's a whole, zone. It's okay. a whole thing. Good. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, when you say that, and we've talked about this before, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show, but it's one of the crazy things of, of our sport because you have guys in our industry, in our sport, that are younger, uh, less or, accomplished, or older, less accomplished, and let's face it, less talented than than Martin, and they they've got a barn full of horses, and somebody at your your level of your skill set, and that can go out and have proven that you can go out and be in the top five of those any of those aged events or be the winner. Um, I think you had a, actually. If I, if I remember right, you had a real good shot at being the winner of the NRBC a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, that horse switched leads on and the end. Yeah, yeah, and you had a little full paw mm -hmm. around the end. But, I mean, why do you think that is? Um, I think the, well, the younger guys are, you know, they, they're kind of cooler than what I am. Cooler? Yeah. You say. You know? So, you know, that's a little bit to do with it. And also, too, I don't, you know, like Sam and McKinnon and that, they're always kind of on me. Oh, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to, you know, the chase. I'm just kind of a little bit, I don't know, I'm just a bit lazy to go on. I don't think you're, you're, you're obviously not You're not lazy, lazy with <laughs> work ethic, but you're lazy with chasing, trying to get your open horse bought. Yeah. Sold, yeah. locked down for you is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm more kind of like, well, if people want to send me a horse, great, but I'm not going to go and go begging you're for You're not going to try to be the well, salesman to send me a yeah. horse. So, you know, so that, it's a little bit on me. Though. I'm going you know? to put this input in there, and I'm, you guys tell me what you think, but I think a lot of those guys that have more horses in training that are less talented, have focused more of their business on just selling horses and trying to sell horses. Do you think more people get horses in training because they're trying to sell them and the owners know that they're trying to sell them? Or do you think more people get horses in training because they know that they can win or they're trying to win on? I think today, um, I think bullshit sells. Gotcha. I think, uh, yeah. You know, who told me that? Who told us that? Yeah. Bob Loomis told yeah. us that. Yeah. And that sells better. Blue Scott sells yeah. better than anything. 
Yeah. And there's a lot of guys out there that they they wear the right hat and the right shirt. They got the right look, and they got they got the whole spiel. Mm -hmm. They got the whole thing. And 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 this is not to take anything away from anybody. Some guys, and and I've done it my whole career. Um, some guys are not. They they treat it like. A business of more than just training horses like my wife has always been very good about saying well, let's go out to dinner with these people and you know what I'm gonna be honest I don't when I'm when I get home at night and I'm tired and I'm wore out I don't feel like I get in the shower I don't feel like going to dinner half the time yep but I do and when I get there I enjoy it yep I do enjoy it I almost always enjoy it. I mean, there's always a few people we don't enjoy, but, you know, for the most part we do. And I think... And they won't be on the show if you don't enjoy them. Exactly. We'll never have them on the exactly. show. Exactly. But I think, you know, I think Martin is a little bit more like Dwayne. Mm -hmm. Quiet and not a self-promoter. Yep. And, you know, you're, you're lucky. McKinnon does a great job of promoting you. Um... As much as you know, as as much as you allow her, mm -hmm. but I still, you know, I think that gets in the way sometimes. That just just that sure. being being quiet and being yeah. reserved, but it is who you are. Yeah, that's right, and that's it's something I've come to terms with. It doesn't, you know, I I understand that. Yeah, and it's. Well, it's gotten you this far. And yeah, it's and, and it's and it's kind of like if it all went us up tomorrow, it's well. You know, that's fine. Well, and I'm sure the open horses that you've had, those owners appreciate that about you, that you're just a straight shooter and you're not yes. you're not blowing the smoke show saying your horse is great. You just tell them like it is. And no. if an opportunity comes along, you make the right decision for them. So I'm sure it's a it's a good thing, but not in this case because you don't have nothing to show at the NRBC. That's wrong. I mean, yeah. But, I but, mean, we all know, but we all know in this business, it's, it is... It's based somewhat on results and and a lot on the on the show. Yeah, and yeah. I know my dad always told me growing up and and my dad I respected him more than any individual that that I've ever been around and I followed pretty much everything he said to a T except this. Because when we were kids my dad always said I it doesn't matter if you show up in the old truck and an old stock trailer, you win and you're gonna get plenty of horses. It doesn't matter what you show up in or what you look like, you win, you're gonna get plenty of horses. Okay, but here's what I saw when I was a kid. I saw guys show up in a fancy truck and a fancy trailer and they didn't win and they got horses. Yeah. So now if you can put those two things together, then you're really doing good. Yeah. If you can't put those things to, together, at least look like you know what you're doing yeah. and you can be successful. If you don't do all the self-promotion, the truck, the trail, all this stuff, then you have to win first place. Yeah. And even then in today's world, sometimes that's not yeah. good enough yeah. because today's client is, is, today's client that can play at the level that we want to play at and, and is willing to spend a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a horse where the business is today for a top level open horse. They they want they want their horse to show up in that truck and trailer. Yep. They want to be associated with that that level that show of show. Mm -hmm. And and I get it. I get it because I'm not entirely different myself. Uh, you know, for the, the things I do in my life, I like to go to nice restaurants. I like to drive nice cars. I like nice stuff. And and I think that's where that client is at. And I, so I think you got to have... I understand that that's why that happens. But what I don't understand, and I think it's because a lot of our clients today don't have an understanding or a knowledge of the technical part of the business, or guys like Martin would have 30 horses in training. Yeah, yeah. And you or know. what it takes to train a horse and how a horse works. And yeah. 
like yeah. you're saying, where you you know you're going to spend all that time trying to get it just right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it's it's easy to see that that's results, mm -hmm. and that's been results for a long time. Yeah. Martin has been results yeah. for a long time, yeah. and the fact that that to me is is one of the things our business where where bullshit sells, and sometimes people don't see that you know the talent level of somebody like Martin doesn't have a barn full of horses and and Dwayne's the same way it's not just Martin you can go through Dwayne's the same wait, way wait wait Martin. wait wait well, I don't know that you should name names so <laughs> let's, let's not throw <laughs> anybody under a bus I'm not throwing anybody this no, is not doing do it or not enough. Absolutely not throw it. I mean, Dwayne would be the first one to tell you he's the same. Yeah. Martin Martin is comfortable with that. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dale Hendricks, a guy that's won the NRBC five times or six times, yeah. won the fraternity, won the derby, won everything. Uh, none of those guys are self promoters. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things you got to be in the business today is a self promoter. Yeah. And and I believe I'm not really that guy either. Honestly, I'm not really that guy either. I mean, you guys that know no, me. No, but you got a lot. Of, got you got wife. a lot of stuff going on. You got a you got a big deal going on. You got a lot of hubbub going on all the time. So Mandy, Mandy classed me up like the when Mandy and I started dating. I took this, the the first. This is right when we first started dating. I went to the Derby, and I pulled the saddle rack out of the back of my trailer and wired it to the to the stall there in you know, the tax stall and you know put all my stuff on there i had no curtains i didn't own a curtain and uh did you just have a tarp on the floor of the tack room I, yeah well i i did have just a old crappy old tarp and and there was nothing you know i had a little one of those little bridle racks you buy at paul taylor's i just hang i mean there was nothing but Man Mandy said, credit to Mandy, she saw a diamond in the rough. <laughs> huh? oh, yeah. She oh, saw yeah. a, a diamond yeah. in the rough. It was, it was, it was the polished. golden locks that he had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the beads. And she thought, I can do something with that. Yeah, I can fix this. Yeah, I can. <laughs> you know how to. <laughs> just like know, every woman in the just world. Just like her. every woman in the yeah. world, I can. Yeah. Yeah. We Only can Mandy, you know, she did. She did clean yeah. things we up can, a little bit. can rebuild him. <laughs> I would, yeah, and I would like to take credit for where I am, but I mean, Mandy's a big part of it. And I, Mandy's the biggest part of it, let's be honest. I mean, Mandy's the biggest part of it. And I think we've talked about this before. I think in today's world, if you're going to be successful as a business, it takes two. I really think it takes a husband and wife team. It takes um, a, a wife to support what you're doing and also to, to, you know, to do the client relations and do all of it. I they really think, I don't think one person can do it on their own anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it takes a team. I think 30 years ago you could do that, but today it's a full out effort because there's so much, uh, so much customer relations that needs to be done yeah. because clients really today, and we see it just going back to what we're talking about, about, you know, so many kids that or, or young men that haven't, you know, proven what they can do in the show pen, but still have a, a large client list because they're very good at customer relations. It's mm -hmm. about showing up and enjoying the experience. Mm -hmm. And I really think that is as big a thing to a lot of people today as being first place. Not everybody even wants the pressure of being first place as a client. They're happy to show up enjoy the experience, have a fun ride, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. because that's what- It is a hobby. It is a hobby. It is a hobby. And that's I mean, what going golfing. I like to go golfing yep. and you know- You don't but, care if you shoot under par or over par? I I don't care if I shoot under 100 or over 100. <laughs> let's, let's leave par out of the equation. But, to, you know, I would hate golfing if I went golfing with somebody that was helping me and said, you know, what the hell are you doing? You hit that in the woods, you dumb. If they yelled at me every bad shot I made and made it like I hated the game, yep. if I didn't break a 90, then I would hate golfing. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with selling the experience to any of the young guys. 
And I think anybody that recognizes where they, where their talent level lands them, and they know what what they need to do to have a successful business, credit to them. Yeah, credit for sure. to them for sure. For sure. Yeah. I get it. the other side to that is though, like you're saying, like there's clients that don't really care if they don't win. Um, that you'd be the same too. It matters to me. Yes. I don't yeah. want to show horses unless, yes. like, but if I'm showing, I'm trying to win. Yes. You know, and otherwise I'm not really interested. So yeah, you're. There is a horse you could show at the NRBC. You just right. yeah. It's just, you know what, it, you've been around the block, you know what it takes to be competitive at yes. that level. Yeah. You don't have it. So why bother? Why, yeah. why even yeah, bother? Why not just focus on the other stuff that you need to do? Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's smart. I mean. Yeah. But I, yeah, I know what you're saying. It, 100%. It's, they're spending their leisure dollar. And so it's all about that perception and about that experience. So, you know, if you can provide that for them, well, then that's how. That's what makes that business run a lot more. Um, yeah, 100. you know, and that, and the, maybe, yeah, for sure. If I wanted to have a lot more horses, I'd have to work with that a lot harder. Um, but the other thing too is like once you like I'm riding 14 now, and that's I'm flat knacker. That's it. I don't. That's a I full can, day and yeah, a half of work. I, I, it's not even a full day. That's a day and a half of work. That's so once you start getting more, then you've got to start employing people yeah. and so yeah. on and so forth. And you've got to make that big jump to justify yeah. and justify that. And that's not easy. Yeah. And you know? for the flat knackered is, you know, tired out. I mean, yeah. 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 flat knackered. <laughs> yeah. Flat knackered is knackered as, as much as you can do. Yeah. Knackered yeah. is tired out and bloke is a term for a person that you know. Yeah, I'm assuming. Oh, it yeah. could be anybody. It yeah. could be anybody. Yeah. Any person that you're aware exists is That's a right. bloke. Yeah. Okay. Usually yeah. male. Yeah. yeah, usually male. Yeah. Is a Sheila. A Sheila. 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 That's right. Yeah. yeah. Is a Sheila? Yeah. Is if you say that, is that offensive? No, hell no. Not. No. Bloke or Sheila? No. Yeah. Sheila. She's yeah. a Sheila. Yeah. If I call my wife a Sheila tonight, <laughs> I'd be sleeping on the couch. If you called her Sheila, yeah, not no, yeah. Sheila. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she made, she did make us these nice hats for the show. Oh, these yeah. are beautiful hats. Yeah, huh? and yeah. these are hats that um, we're going to be sending out. People, people are going to be wearing shortly. Yeah. we're not wearing them because we can't afford more than these four right now. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we're, yeah, we're not That's getting it. crazy with the hats, but we got them out here just so people can see what what they can wear but what about what about when you moved to america were you surprised at the success you had here so quickly oh no, well no i don't know about that no. i don't know about success so quickly it, um but you had been doing in australia you had been doing pretty dang good yeah before you moved back oh yeah did you know he showed smart like smart no. Yeah. Yeah. He's world champion, right? You are a world yeah. champion on Smart Like Smart. No, yeah. I no, I something. no, I won that Equitan. Equitan title win something. it or something or other. Yeah. Like back, he had like the highest yeah. score in Australia. Backstory on Smart Like Smart. Joe Schmidt trained Smart Like Smart. Made the fraternity finals on mm -hmm. him. Two thousand three. And tried to run him flat off to win. in the final. Oh, was gonna win. He tried to mark a two forty eight. He tried to <laughs> set. <laughs> he tried to <laughs> set a world land speed record in pattern five. That's close. Did you feel any of that when you yeah, showed yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of residue there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I showed the heck out of that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. He was a stopper. Yeah. At least you knew he could yeah. stop. He could he, stop. Yeah. He, he was a big stopper. So you moved from Australia back to America. Yeah. You didn't. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And you had, I mean, there was a lot, lot more going on in Australia when you moved back um, the second time. You know, when oh, you yeah. Moved, yeah, it's gradually, it, it's always building a little bit, but the just, like, Australia is the size of the continental US, but it has, I'm not even sure if it has 30 million yet, it's maybe a little bit shy of 30 million, so... A tenth of the amount of people. Yeah, so the population is, is, is not there, and everybody's spread out so much, and um, so it's, you know, it's, it's always going to be limited to a certain degree the rain and horse business but you know I certainly think even in the time that we've been here which you know is nine 
years now, um, things have even changed. I've gone back and done a couple of clinics and there's some nice horses back there because of the fact that they can import semen you know, and they've got a few good mares there because that was they really needed to get more mare power because they can have the stud, but they need the mares. But you know, they they're kind of getting that way to where there's some some nice horses there now, and that's what drives the whole thing. If they've got a good product in the show pen, well then that makes the whole deal work a whole lot better. So um, so yeah, it's getting there. Um, but uh, you know, population is the killer. Yeah. And the thing too is, like in, in Australia, cutting is huge. Probably outside of the US, cutting I'd say would be second. Um, yeah, and there's <laughs> been a bunch of Australians come over here and be like mm. right away there yeah. playing at the top level. Because there's so many cattle, you know, there's um, in, in Australia, the, you know, cattle outnumber people by, I don't know, 10 times or something like this. It's so, and there's that culture too where you know, Australians are kind of a little bit, um, they're kind of a proud, sort of a pig-headed sort of a race. Mob. See, no, pig, you pig, can say pig, pig-headed, but I can't say assholes. Yeah, because I, <laughs> right. I'm talking about myself. So, you know, they're... I'm talking about myself. Yeah, they're fiercely... I think I like to prefer it if you guys it. worded it as... They were very proud people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget the pig yeah. Well, and to be clear, now I want, I love Australians because some of my best friends are assholes. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, those, those are the people I tend to get along yeah. with best yeah. with, right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and the only, like, why is Joe here then? <laughs> yeah, Joe is, Joe is not an asshole. I don't know how Joe, he kind of just puts up with us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I, Put up with him. I have several Australians that are really good friends. And, and the only Australian that I know that is a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a chicken is Brendan Clark. I oh, mean, yeah. Oh, right. Because he oh, hasn't yeah. even he will, you or anything he about He will not. Too. He will not engage with us playing uh, ping pong. You know, ping pong. Ping pong. And, he, and he's a couple of times, he's, he, you know, he big talks story. Oh, yeah. Yes. He talks and if the trash. right people are around, he puffs his chest out and oh, tells yeah. us how good yeah. he is, yeah. but he never shows up. Never shows up. For ping pong. And, you, for yeah, ping pong. Pong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and yet he strapped himself on the back of. Bulls. Bulls. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, but that's nothing that's, that's, compared to facing me. That's, 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 yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah. looking at this bull on the other yeah. end. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. He and Matt Gaines, and I guess I mean, I guess Brendan with you, Matt Gaines was your Matt. Matt's kind of a little guy. I don't know if we'd have to get Matt a stool for his end. <laughs> Brendan probably need a stool, stool too. Yeah. Right? They're not big guys. Oh, we just know? need to put them on the high side of the room or yeah, something. Yeah, we have yeah. to build up the floor a little bit yeah. for they, them. They are. They are. They are. They are but there. anyway, yeah, no, and but, so but no. Be, anyway, back to being pig headed. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> I'm proud, proud, proud. Yeah, yeah. So Let's go with they that. can do the American thing if there's cattle involved. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha, gotcha. Because they they've got their heritage of cattle, and so the cutting they can kind of come at that. Okay, it's an American thing, but there's cattle involved, so we can do it. Okay. Whereas rain and there's no cattle involved, so there's a there's always that in a you know in a lot of people there's that bit of a resistance. Oh, it's just a you know an American thing. Um, they have a hard time transitioning over. Well, the, it's more just a mindset, you know. It's and then the other side of it too is like the the, the English style of riding is is huge. Gotcha. So gotcha. it's kind of it's it's not in a a place that's really suited to getting large, you know, numbers of people. It's gradually getting better. I think the whole FEI thing helped for sure. Um, kind of raise the exposure of it a little bit. Um, but you know, there's those couple of factors kind of working against it. But you know, it's earlier tonight you were talking about you know your wife wanting to get her house built, and mm -hmm. get your place built over mm -hmm. there. Well, is your place built? Yeah. Were you moving back to your place, or what are you One doing? One day. One day. Well, see, that's a yeah. that's a yeah. that's, yeah. A, that's, yeah. A, yeah. that's oh. a touchy oh. subject. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. But we can go. No, that's we what can we get do it. best. Well, that's yeah, what we do best. Yeah. Listen, this is we, what this we, show's we, all about. Yeah. We 
we uh, we dive right into people's problems. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you yeah. solve them? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. We just stir the pot a little. <laughs> yeah. That's what these shows are about, though. Yeah. Aren't okay. They? Okay. Yeah. Um, so somebody in your family has some roots growing here, and they don't want to move. Or Correct. What? Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Which basically, there's three. There's a, it's a family of four, and there's probably three that want to stay here and there's one at some point because he's getting old and bugging <laughs> would like to go home and just gotcha. sit on the porch and gotcha. so relax. Your, three. your kids are basically, I mean, oh, yeah. they are American yes. yeah. now. That's they're, right. they're here yep. and I can tell you one thing I know, Mama and Mama's not going to be high on leaving those kids anywhere. No. I mean Mama's going to want to stay with the kids based on, I know my wife, yeah. I mean it's about the kids, and so you're. I'm afraid you're facing an upside uphill yeah. battle. There. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that. You might be yeah. thinking about. Calling. It's hard too because you have a great family, man. You can't just ditch them and leave them. Oh, I the mean, kids. You, yeah, the kids. <laughs> I can leave the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, we're, that's what we're talking about because I'm sure at all of our lives we would ditch our wives. I, I know Tom's talking about nice okay. about his wife yeah. on camera. Right. But I'm telling you, you should hear some of her phone calls. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say she wasn't mean to me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, so anyway, so now we do have a place there maybe one day. Are we, you renting it out? Yes, or? we're oh, renting okay. it out. Yes, gotcha. right now we're renting it out. So Cool. Um, and now the place that you have here now, you you've do done a lot house. of work on it, and you've yeah. been building your stalls. And yeah, and that's kind of, because it's kind of like my mindset is, okay, everything I'm doing, I'm kind of weighing up, is this going to add value? You know, am I going to see this? Whereas for Sam, it's more like, okay, we need to do this so our lifestyle here is good. Right. Yeah. yeah, you're well, trying I'm, to I'm sell always, and yeah. run, yeah. and she's <laughs> trying to make life easier to stay. That's right. Yeah. That's Ooh. right. To yeah. Settle, yeah. settle in. Yeah. You got a problem. Yeah, yeah. I can argue. tell you that right <laughs> now. That's right. That's the, right. the fights you guys must yeah. have. Yeah. No, no, no. It's all, it's all buried. Yeah, you can it's see, all you can see it's every all fight. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah. 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 Well, I feel like I feel like at some point in time you might have to be calling a realtor in Australia. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's a it's a dream. It's a dream. Yeah, it, I don't want to kill that dream <laughs> just yet. <laughs> uh, we did yeah. actually. We did a realtor did call us about it, and, which was a good. It was a pleasant answer, but. You know, I sort of want to hang on to it for you, a while. You may have to just go there and visit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. What about, um, do you still have any family in Australia or do you still have any roots there other uh, than just, this place? Just sisters. Gotcha. Yeah, and then of course Sam's got, you know, brothers and, and sister there and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so we, yeah, we certainly have, you know. And if you did move back, what would you do? Would you give clinics? Would you ride a horse here and there? Uh, you know, I'd certainly ride horses because that's the only thing I can kind of halfway do so i'd have to do that and you have a sister here yes that's a very good horse yes, trainer yes and does that, a really sure. good job and yep. you guys spend a lot of time together here you know surprisingly not a lot like probably well she generally comes by and visits maybe most weekends or whatever but um you know she'll trail a few horses up every now and then and we'll go down there every now and then um so i guess more than you know, more than we we had, of course, when she was in Europe and I was here, but... Um, well, it's hard. I mean, yeah. I'm the same way with my brothers. I mean, my brothers and I are super tight, but it's hard. You know, yeah. we're all doing our own you thing. You do your daily thing. And, yeah. Yeah, sure. I get it. And yeah. will you think she'll stay here? You think Sean will stay here? Um, as far as I know, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Mm. Well... That's interesting. I mean, it's tough, tough decision for you to make mm. at some point, but keep the dream alive, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. But the, you know, it keeps the, you going. And the other thing, like I've said the same, is like, why can't we do both? You know, what's what's to stop you from spending a little bit of time there and a little bit of time here, sort of thing? Because their babies are here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing that's yeah. gonna stop you. 
No. But they're not going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that straight. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'll go with you, Martin. I got it. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, what we'll do. I'll be your wingman. Yeah. 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 I'll saddle them. You ride them. Yeah. All right? Okay. Yeah, that's what we'll do. I reckon we'll, we'll just we can't start. Out. We can't start real early in the morning, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we won't have to. We'll only ride yeah. four or five. All right. Well, we've uh, we've hit our hour mark. Yeah. Martin, thanks so much for coming. It was fun. No, thank These things you. happen fast. We never they dig does. into everything that no. we want to dig into. We no. just always skim the surface. So. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. We, we need to have you back. We'll definitely have you back. It's so much fun. If you no. come, if you'll come back, we'll have you back. I mean, yeah, no, I'll come back. I got a yeah, I got a feed and a couple of beers, so I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. I do talk a lot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can get a little deeper into some emotional stuff. If that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. what I was. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, waiting. Yeah. If yeah, you need, just hit the top yeah. of that. But, if you need any help emotionally, we're really yeah, good. We're here. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially I, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll break it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will work through it. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Again, don't don't share. forget to uh, share our videos, like our videos. Please please comment on them. Uh, anything we can answer or anybody you want to see, um, put them on there, and we'll try and get them. Help we, us grow the show. If we like them, if we don't like them, we're not going to interview them. But if we, if whoever you put on there, we happen to like, we'll get them. I promise. Well, a couple, a couple of y'all's suggestions have been dumb. Yeah, come but, on. Yeah, we a couple. Like a lot of yeah, we just don't like some of them. But. Yeah, trust us. <laughs> yeah. Not, not cool. <laughs> anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and grow the show. Yeah.